considering that you decided to show up an hour late, there are no more standard starter Pokemon for you. Not even Charmander? You mean the Pokemon that inevitably becomes the best gym sweeper in Kanto? Yeah, no, he was the first one snatched. A word to the wise. In two generations, when every fire starter is a firefighting type, pick the goddamn fire starter. Got it. So what Pokemon are left? Well, there's one, but... Who summons me? <laughs> oh my god, it's so cute! Suffer! Oh, do you know that would happen, you son of a bitch! Little bit! <laughs> And welcome to another episode of Rolling Twenties. We are the latest programs to be sent to the games. Pong it is! I am Jeremy. Steve? Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, you can follow this show and several others in the MSP library at missionstarpodcast.com. You can subscribe to the show on iTunes and on Stitcher. Uh, you can like our Facebook page uh, under Mission Star Podcast. You can... Uh, Send me any emails, fan mail, hate mail, suggestions for the show at mspfreight at yahoo.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at rolling underscore twenties. How is life? Um, I saw that uh, RoboCop trailer. Yeah, that that one is kind of breaking the social circles. It's not exactly a headliner, but uh, a lot of people, a lot of people just kind of said, "Not another remake." Now they've seen the trailer and just said, "Okay, I can watch that." Yeah. I said the I same think, thing. I don't really have a problem with remakes in general. Just doesn't well, neither do me. I, but... Remake is remake just... It, it's not a fun word, because for every Star Trek, we get both a Karate Kid and an Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I, those, so... I think I just hit Jesse in a sensitive place with some of those words. <laughs> so, we'll be sure to link uh, something to uh, the quick... Uh, what, Apple trailers. They, t- they tend to have more movie trailers than most other places, so that everyone can check that out for themselves. I'm, I'm on the fence. There's aspects of it I like and aspects I don't. Um, I don't mind the remake so much, but as, and I get the idea of turning him into black tactical gear, but I kind of miss that silver with the gray trim. I think they still have that. Well, they have it early on in the movie, but they're going to switch out. I think they might switch it back eventually. Uh, it, it's, it's my feeling on it. What can I say? Yeah, well... You know, I don't mind redesigns, but there's a couple things I would like consistent. That's my deal. Until it comes out. Yeah, I mean, speaking of movies, I have been on a tear lately. I have watched The Man with the Iron Fist, Oblivion, Kick-Ass 2, Star Trek Into Darkness, and something else which is kind of slipping my mind. I I don't know what the frick is up with me. Maybe it's because my life has had a recent change, but I've just kind of filled it with movies. Um... Star Trek in, well, Into Darkness was a lot of fun. Kick-Ass 2 was not as sunny as the original, but still a, a fun watch to me. You know, violence and everything. Uh, Man with the Iron Fist. God, I wish I could scrub my frontal lobe after that. <laughs> you know, just lift up my head and just scrub the damn thing clean. Um, Oblivion, it was cool, but I wouldn't exactly say I'd want to own it. Because once you know what the major twists are, it makes everything else so obvious. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. I, I wish I got yet. a chance to watch Kick-Ass 2. It's no longer in theaters in my area. I I, I don't know what to say. It, uh, this is not doing as well in theaters as they hoped. It's another one of those movies they thought was going to be a blockbuster, but it's turned into the Lone Ranger. Um, I don't think I don't think what Jim Carrey did helped. I don't think it hurt necessarily, but it kind of threw a spotlight on the fact that this is a violent movie, so maybe a lot of parents were telling their kids, no, sir, not with my $15. Um... Let's name up violent movies this summer. Yeah, I don't think it's so violence. Well, I didn't. I didn't say that there haven't been other violent movies, but this was one of the few that had a specific spotlight thrown on it because of the protestations of one of its actors. I hadn't heard about that. D- didn't we discuss how Jim Carrey said he wasn't going to promote the movie? Oh, that's right. Okay, as long as I'm not completely stupid. I probably just dismissed it because it was Jim Carrey. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's starting early this evening. Uh, this is the show where we're going to talk about what kind of superheroes we as individuals might be. We're going to cover a few different subjects on that one. Uh, 
as usual, we're going to start off with our Kickstarter corner. I, I've, I've come across a lot more Kickstarters than I thought I would. Uh, we'll start with the Mr. Sunshine one, the one we discussed, where it's apparently a tester. It, uh, it did not reach goal. It ended as of September 1st and have a goal of 7,500 and only reached 261. But uh, as we discussed, this was just kind of a treading of the waters while he's trying to build up to the actual Kickstarter and projects he's going to start up. So I imagine he is not disappointed this didn't come through. Uh, I found a new one called Headlock, The Last Territory. Uh, what this is, is a comic book drama set in the world of wrestling, of all things. Uh, okay. There's been comic books about wrestling before, but usually it involves you know, the World Wrestling Federation actually uh, using its people. Uh, this is more of an independent project. It's uh, it's being done by Michael Kingston of uh, Clifton Park Center, New York. Uh, it has six days to go. It ends on September 13th. It has 366 backers and have a goal of 16,000. He's already reached 20,902. Wow. This is happening. Uh, I'm a little curious about it. I don't quite understand what brought this up specifically, but hey. Uh, I, I mean... I don't know. I've seen worse projects than this get a book, so why the hell not? <laughs> it's not exactly Forbush, man. Y'all sound a little astonished for some reason. I... What? <laughs> okay, nice to know you're paying attention. That's great. <laughs> uh, for about the last three weeks now, we've been talking about Project Cosplayers Unite. Uh, Sixteen cosplayers from across the internet were supposed to be assembled in uh, London for MCM Comic Con to uh, do a calendar shoot, some group shoots, and individual shoots. Uh, this is a rather big project being put together by Lucas Ambrosio of London. Uh, it has 41 hours to go. It's supposed to end on September 8th. It has 306 backers. It has a goal of 30,000 pounds, but at this point it's only reached into 16,274 pounds. Mm. This one is not looking good unless a major sugar daddy comes through in the last, literally in the last hour. Yeah, if it isn't fun by now, it's not. No. I, I was trying to think of where this may have gone wrong, and it is kind of a big and expensive project. It's not a bad one, per se, but maybe you should have started a little more modestly. This is a big crew to assemble. That may have added. The, that may have made this huge price tag here. Yeah, well, that and, I mean, it's it's not even just, like, gathering them all in one state. It's gathering them all in a different country. Well, that's not necessarily fair, because a lot of these cosplayers are international. Uh, two are from America, one is from Spain, one's from Italy, one's, two are from Hungary, one's from Germany, Belgium, France, two France, Australia, two Australia, uh, three, four from the UK. Yeah, see? This is already so an international contingent. Mean, that's that's what I'm saying. I mean, you're, you're going international with this thing. It might have been a little bit too much for your first the plane tickets alone. First attempt. Yeah, that's probably what half of this 30000 is about, is f- airfare, frankly. Yeah. Two well, and I don't back. think it's mm. too expensive to travel within Europe, but... I couldn't say. I don't have much of an interest in going into Europe. That's not to say it's a bad place, it's just not one of those places that interests me. Yeah. Um, you see, also we've been following for the last few weeks the Standing in the Stars, the Peter, Peter Mayhew story. Uh, someone is trying to put together... Well, not someone. Ryan Ziegler from New York, New York, is trying to put together a uh, documentary on the life of Peter Mayhew. Uh, most people... Well, most nerds know that as the man in the Chewbacca costume in the original Star Wars trilogy. Uh, apparently there's more interest in this than in cosplayers. It has 745 backers. It has seven days to go. It ends on September 14th. They have a goal of $42,000. They currently stand at $39,875. Nice. Yeah, that's going to get done. Yeah. yeah it, it, I've, that sounds like something a lot of people would be think is cool. Yeah, they're literally $2,225 off goal. So that's not too many more donors if they do it in, in a decent package. Uh, one thing I didn't know about was there is a cosplayer who's actually donated for this in the form of prints. For the $65 uh, donation, you get a print of uh, Leanna Vamp in a sexy Chewbacca costume. <laughs> Which sounds a bit like a misnomer, I know, but, you know, she tried something different. And I, I've met her at Comic-Con, actually. Mm. Oh, cool. cool. You know, nice talkative lady and everything. Didn't have a lot of time because every time I tried to talk to her, somebody turned her around and said, can I take a picture? <laughs> you know, it's kind of funny. You'd think they wouldn't be into hairy girls, but there you go. <laughs> huh? 
<laughs> I got one. Uh, something that listener Brandon brought up to me uh, last uh, last week, and this kind of frightens me. Uh, there is a new company called Concept USA. Uh, it's being run by Keiji Inafune. He's a uh, he's been a director and producer on the original Mega Man games for Capcom. Hmm. What he's done is he's put together kind of an all star team of pro- uh, producers and game designers, several of which have worked on Mega Man games for Capcom in the past. And he put together a new game concept, Mighty Number no. Nine. He calls it the spiritual successor to Mega Man. Hmm. And uh, he at PAX just last week he announced that he was opening a new Kickstarter to create this game. And the game, this thing had a really lofty goal: nine hundred thousand dollars. This new character is going to be called Beck. He's going to have a partner named Call. Beck and Call, yeah. Uh, he doesn't just take weapons. In other words, it's not like Mega Man where he's just suddenly flinging new firearms out of the same form. He will actually transform his body as he gains new weaponry. Oh, he'll he'll they... transform into a dozer, Gatling gun, and in uh, one case he even turns himself into a giant hammer to swing at things. Uh, this, you know, it, it is basically Mega Man updated. Uh Here's the yeah. kicker. It has a goal of $900,000. I watched this thing when Brandon sent it to me. As I watched it, it jumped up uh, $100,000 in a day. Mm. In the first day of their Kickstarter, they reached the $900,000 goal. They actually finished $1.1 million. Uh, it, na- it currently has 24 days to go. It ends on October 1st, the beginning of next month. They have 30,646 backers. They currently stand at $1,772,340. Damn. And they have not reached all their goals. They've reached the stretch goals of two more, two additional stages being put in the game. Max and Linux versions. New Game Plus and Turbo modes. A making of documentary. Their current goal is a $2.2 million where they're actually going to take this from just a Steam game and put it on the networks of the PlayStation, uh, Microsoft, and Wii universes. Hmm. And they stand a hell of a chance of getting there. Yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, wow, yeah. I would definitely play this game. Uh, I'm interested as well. I'm considering I'm throwing money play, behind this one. I'm about that, because I know he'll be interested. Yeah, I'm considering throwing money behind this, because I'm curious, and I don't play many PC games, but if this gets onto uh, the, the Xbox network, I'm, I'm probably down like a clown. Uh, another thing that I was put onto, although rather late, is the Project Phoenix. It's Japan's indie uh, RPG feeding... Uh, featuring their AAA talent. It's been put out by Creative Intelligence Arts. It's a uh, a new JRPG idea with squad-based real-time strategy game design. Uh, I've never been much of the real-time strategy s- things. Uh, those that know me know I don't really have the patience for it. I'd probably end up screaming in uh, Yiddish at my computer, and I don't even know Yiddish. <laughs> but it has four days to go to end on September 11th. It's still uncomfortable Whoa. to say. Uh, it has 12,921 backers. It has a goal of $100,000. And of that goal, they now have $779,373. This is also happening. Damn. <laughs> they haven't reached all their stretch goals. They had a long-distance one of 1.6, uh, 1.65 million, and that's that's not going to happen in four days. No. But they do have some notable people behind it, including the uh, director and producer of uh, Diablo 3 and Valkyria Chronicles, as well as Steins Gate. Uh, they have the game designer from L.A. Noir on board. Uh, they have the uh, they have a senior editor f- that worked in Oxford University, an art director from Final Fantasy 3, 12, and 14, the lead artist from Tenchu. Well, you can't say he hired bad people. They even have the lead 3D modeler on Halo 4 and Crisis 3. Wow. I, I don't know who put this together, but he definitely picked and choose like the the best of the best in current in current gaming. Oh, get this! They even have uh, Donna Burke, who did voices for Metal Gear Solid Five, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles, and Magical Girl Lyrical Nanoha. As hmm. who? It mm. doesn't say that specifically. Ah. Oh, it says she played the artifact Raising Heart, whatever the hell that means. Oh, yeah, that would be Nanoha's uh, magical. Weapon. Yeah, 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 yeah. I watch the show. Um, here's something that's going to bring back the Wayback Machine to several people. I found another Kickstarter. I know. Who knew, right? Um, mm-hmm. They're putting out a video ge- or they're trying to make an English adaption to the French video game of the Mysterious Cities of Gold. 
Hmm. They had a goal of $30,000. They've already reached $31,119 on 615 backers, so somebody put in major money. Uh, it has 23 days to go and ends on September 29th. The only uh, issue now is whether or not they reach the stretch goals, I suppose. But it does appear to be an update of the old uh, Nickelodeon TV show. Okay, I thought this looked familiar. I watched this a lot when I was a kid. I was kind of obsessed with the weird gold vehicles they came across a lot of the time. I was into machines. What can I say? It's not like they gave me a child boner or anything. (laughs) And uh, the last of the Kickstarters I've been looking into lately, uh, Akiba Anime Art Magazine, Volume 00. It's otaku pop culture scenes. Uh, This is being done by JH Lab in Tokyo. It's a new pop culture magazine from Akihabara featuring otakus, advanced technology, kawaii cosplays, doujins. Basically, it's the ultimate uh, Japanese nerd magazine is what they're trying to put together. All uh, centered around Akihabara, Japan, which those that are in the circles know that is nerd central in the Pacific Rim. Uh, They already have 612 backers. They had a goal of $4,500. They're currently at 31983 so maybe their first issue will be Gold Leaf. <laughs> uh, they still have 36 days to go. This ends on October 13th. Wow. Yeah, now it's just a matter of how fancy this gets. Mm. But uh, they've already reached several stretch goals. Uh, you know, they're going to put an additional sticker in it. Uh, they'll get the... Uh, they're going to put a can badge. I'm not quite sure what that is. And they're, with uh, since they've already reached fifteen thousand, they're going to use high quality paper. Uh, they're going to add the number of pages in, or increase the number of pages in the magazine. The size of the book's been enlarged, and the cover of the book is uh, going to have a hologram and uh, an upgraded cover. So, what was it? If they get over forty five thousand, they may have additional items and uh, more artists from the uh, Akiba area. So. You know, there are several projects of nerd interest out there that are being well-funded. Yeah, um, I just found one for uh, Tracy and Laura Hickman's Sojourner Tales board game. Huh! Oh, that's interesting. Man, I haven't heard those names in a long time. Yeah, 33 days to go, $11,219 out of 26000 so far. Mm -hmm. That's a fair shot. Yeah. All right, keep an eye on that. Uh, news has been varied this week. Um, the biggest thing that I came across was that uh, the director of several notable animes, Hayao Miyazaki, uh, the most famous stuff he did was Spirited Away and uh, Princess Mononoke, at least as far as the U.S. audiences are concerned. He has another feature coming, Wind Rises, and he has said that this will be his last. Yep. He has said he's retiring. Uh, several people on the on the networks have noted that he has said several times before that he is retiring. However, this is the first time that seems to have been picked up by an international uh, international press. In other words, everybody has now taken note of this, and he's at, he's made it pretty clear he doesn't want to do this anymore. Well, dude, the guy is seventy three. I seventy two, yeah. but it's well, it's a fair statement. You know, you yeah. can definitely say he's done it all. Um, this may be his last animated project, although he may still do feature films. Well, I think, uh, isn't his son also involved in this Studio Ghibli thing, so... I believe so. There have been some, though, that have said, what's left for Studio Ghibli if this man is done? That's a fair statement, though. I mean, most of the stuff I hear about with Studio Ghibli's name has Miyazaki's name all over it. Yeah. You know, I'm not saying it's going to go nuclear. They're ju- they're not going to turn over and start stabbing themselves with swords or anything, but you got to wonder what else they've got in their tank. Try something new? Get some new talent out there? Uh, take a it, shot in the dark? Well, if they go Moe, they can turn themselves over on their swords, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> uh, that would be uh, that would be my nightmare. Uh, Kamikaze has come out with a spat of uh, announcements in the last week. Have you guys followed those? Mm, really. Nope. <laughs> oh, my God. This all is right up my alley. They're doing a Powerpuff Girls reunion. The, uh, the voice actresses that played the three girls in the original series are going to be on the stage. Okay, I did hear about okay. that. They announced that Lori Petty is going to be on the stage. <laughs> uh, she played Tank Girl in the movies and several <laughs> other uh, several other projects. And uh, the one that hit me the most, but I'm sure people are just going, what's wrong with you? Weird Al Yankovic is coming. Oh, oh nice. Cool. <laughs> I, I've never heard V gush like that. <laughs> Weird Al is 
He's, he's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's going to have two appearances there uh, during the weekend on November 2nd and 3rd. Uh, it doesn't say whether or not he's going to sing. He better sing. He better. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't want to go all... I can see him doing it's pretty good like stand-up or whatever, but... Yeah, I'm sure it'll be a fun Q&A. He's very quick-witted. You can only hope I get a few minutes of his time to ask him some questions. I'll probably be staring into those weird, intense eyes he's got. <laughs> <laughs> Not in a loving way, but just... Stop sucking down my soul, man. I can't take this. <laughs> uh, remember we discussed last week how everyone thought there was a joke that came out by Nintendo about their 2DS handheld system? Yeah. Apparently they went for another punchline. They Uh-oh. announced last... W- they announced this week the One DS. What? I am dead freaking even, serious. They broke physics. Uh, they didn't just break physics. Remember the Two DS? It was basically a Three DS with no three D technology and no hinge. It was this flat slab. Right. Okay. Take the design of the Two DS. Take off the bottom screen. There's your One DS. So it's a Game Boy. Is it cheaper? Uh, I didn't get much info on pricing. It, it was something else that was broken on uh, the Facebook of Mission Star Podcast earlier this week, and I just kind of delved into it trying to find out more. Uh, the website that was up appears to have been stripped recently, so I don't know. I'm not certain if this is a joke, but at the same time, if it isn't, pick one, people. I, I, I don't need four things staring me in the face in the Nintendo racks, and I don't even buy their stuff. Who is running <laughs> Nintendo? Uh, apparently guys who are obsessed with being able to play on the toilet. You know, you can't put out a system that'll get up there with the big boys, but you can certainly put out three handhelds that all play the same games, right? Uh, <sighs> two screens scare me. I need one. <laughs> <laughs> it's too complicated. I can't follow this. It needs to be like my cell phone. That'll probably be the next handheld. <laughs> That'll probably be the next uh, handheld. The Nintendo DS, and all it is is a cell phone repackaged. <laughs> Nintendo. Nintendo Kindle Android. Yeah, and the next project will be the Nintendo Kiss My Ass. <laughs> uh, well, Kevin Feig has uh, talked more about Guardians of the Galaxy. He says that this is not their Star Wars. His quote was, We're not making this to make Marvel Star Wars. We're doing this to explore the other side of the existing Marvel Universe. The fact that Peter Quill is a human from our time, that he carries a personal cassette recorder with him, already is very different. It's not a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. It's now in a galaxy far, far away. Hmm. At least he's actually making the differentiation, because a lot of people have said it's, it's Marvel Star Wars, and at least he's trying to be clear. <laughs> yeah. That always baffled me about Star Wars. How can you be a long time ago, far, far away, and these all people are ostensibly human? I, you know, that that's the same thing that bothered me about the original run of Transformers. You have all these robots who, uh, who have never seen Earth, but are all very human-shaped and have names like Jazz and Smokescreen. Yeah. I, <laughs> I could go have an explanation for that, but it would take a whole podcast, so... <laughs> Note to self, V's rants. Uh, let's see. Uh, everybody knows that uh, that Batman Superman is coming. The movie is being made uh, in the near future. Mm-hmm. Uh, what everyone may not have clued into until this week is that uh, they picked the location where they're going to film the whole thing. Detroit, Michigan. <laughs> you can laugh all you want, but at least it's a city where A... There's going to be a lot of empty storefronts, so you won't have to co-opt a whole lot of city blocks and piss people off. And, and people desperate for jobs. Absolutely. You know, this is a city that could use the money of suddenly, you know, 4,000 people landing in the area to film a movie. Do they no, I was laughing more due to the fact that Jesse had brought up some people complaining about uh, Robotech not being uh, in Detroit. Or, or Robocop, sorry. Reading the Robotech uh, page. and Everything post-apocalyptic should be filmed here. <laughs> Either there or Memphis. I know nothing of Memphis. Oh, Memphis has turned to a hole. Their economy is just in the tank. Hmm. That would explain... I haven't even I want a bridge in between. You come to Merced. <laughs> That's not a bridge in between. That's a sidetrack into Hell's outer armpit. <laughs> you guys live there, and you can admit that freely. Yes. Ugh. Uh, speaking of movie news, did we we didn't mention last week that Rocket Raccoon has been cast? Oh, 
Yes, no. as, uh, what, um... Uh, Bradley Cooper. Brad, yep, yeah. Bradley Cooper from uh, the Hangover movies and A-Team fame has been cast officially as Rocket Raccoon. He gets to play the psychotic marsupial. <laughs> I can see him as that. You know, he gets to join Chris Pratt as Star-Lord, Zoe Saldana as Gamora, Dave Bautista, the wrestler, as Drax the Destroyer, and an unofficial but very likely Vin Diesel as Groot. I'd like to correct you, raccoons aren't marsupials. Thanks. <laughs> so important right now. But it is. They're reforming the masses. Okay. <laughs> I, I forgot that they weren't marsupials. <laughs> That's how important it was. You didn't care. <laughs> Uh, also in uh, that news, uh, Kevin Feige uh, expanded a bit on what Thanos' potential role is in the movie. Apparently the main bad guy is Ronan the Accuser, who's being played by uh, Lee Pace, and Thanos is lurking above everything, kind of waiting in the wings, seeing how shit plays out. Uh, you know that Gamora starts the movie as a villain who's working for Thanos in extension, and she just decides she didn't want to do it anymore. So apparently Thanos' presence will be felt throughout the, f- the film. Whether or not he'll be seen... Maybe a different thing. Hmm. I think they're building up to something much bigger, probably which we'll see in probably the third Avengers. Well, it's, it's one of those <clears throat> it's one of those things that's interesting. Um, I just you almost wonder if this is going to branch in two directions. Will the Avengers deal with different threats, and the Guardians of the Galaxy and Nova are established to deal with Thanos? Can they actually run multiple stories and have people still go to all these movies? That's the question. Ooh, that's kind of scary. It's possible, but... It, it is you know, possible, but... I can't watch every freaking movie that comes out. You could if you wait uh, less than three weeks to go see it. Yeah. <laughs> I can almost sense the seething hatred from that. Uh, also in the Guardians of the Galaxy news, Michael Rooker said he's excited for sequels. Uh, it's unknown whether or not he's just kind of making suppositions or if he let something accidentally drop. But the quote from him was, when I first got the role of Yondu, uh, James Gunn was like, don't read any of the comics. But it's beautiful stuff. Whenever you do a film of comic characters and stuff, you don't know how much you can show. You don't know how much is going to be brought out. Nowadays, movies are done, and they already have two or three others planned out. So, stuff you do in this one, you ask, why aren't we doing this? And they say, we'll be patient. Hmm. <laughs> so, again, I don't know if he's just making, um, if, if he's drawing conclusions based on the fact that so many Marvel characters have been in multiple films, or if he's just, uh, or if he's actually been told something. So either way it goes is rather exciting. Yeah, the more I hear about this movie, the more I'm, I'm excited about this one over Avengers too. This sounds like a very different story. Uh, in general nerd news, scientists uh, watched something they refer to as a space slinky erupt from a giant black hole. Okay. That interesting. Uh, well, they used the Hubble telescope and they spotted a uh, monster black hole unleashing a spiraling jet of super hot plasma that looks like a cosmic slinky toy moving through outer space. <laughs> uh, oh. They say it's at the center of a distant galaxy marked as M87. It's 50 million light years from Earth. It's 5,000 light years long and it's made up of a long string of gas blobs. Uh, some of which appear to be zigzagging along a spiral path, while others appear to loop around in a motion that scientists dubbed a space slinky. So, in other words, <clears throat> the idea that uh, black holes just consume, consume, consume endlessly, they may be blowing that theory apart and actually finding out that matter is being jetted from these things at the same time. Or you know, BSC won't burp. There's another theory that black holes are actually like the uh, Big Bang of another galaxy or another universe on the other side of the You know, just my luck you bring this up and then we find out the Galactus just emerged from one of these things. <laughs> <laughs> the slinky was Galactus. <laughs> that was Galactus's toilet. <laughs> you know, but I'm always a, as a kid, the idea of black holes frightened me. Now as the more I look at these things, they're not just a yeah, they're not just devourers. They are putting out something, whether it be the matter they swallow just kind of strained and spaghettified, or if there's actually something new coming out of it. I don't know. Wouldn't it be weird to think that if matter comes in, it gets belched out as new nebulas? Yeah, that could be interesting. Yeah, but I'm I'm no astronomer, so don't take that as anything <laughs> scientific. Um, 
In other general nerd news, I would have loved to take a school bus in Holland. Uh, the, okay. the, 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 there's a Dutch team from Delft University, Techno- uh, University of Technology. They've developed an electric drive train. <laughs> wow. Okay, all of a sudden the, uh, the ice cream I've eaten seems to be hitting my nerves. They've developed an electric drive train, a lightweight build, and a concept that uses low energy and developed a super bus. This thing is bizarre. It looks like it can seat about uh, 20 kids and a driver who sits in the front center of this thing, and it looks like somebody stretched out a Lamborghini. And it's not just like there's a front door where people get on, like, school buses in the U.S. This thing has individual doors and seats and harnesses per kid. Whoa. It has seatbelts. Yes. That's an innovation. I'm staring at this. I, I would love to take a ride in this thing. Yeah, me too. This looks like a trip. I would... Actually... I would kind of like to take a cross-California trip in this thing. Just sit down, read, and watch the world zip by as fast as a regular car is going instead of trudging on a diesel. Yeah. But uh, I'll link a few images because... Yeah, if they get this thing working, if it's worth it, oh, I'd put out a few of these in the U.S. Hell yeah. Probably steal some Metro Riders. <laughs> uh, here's something that doesn't come as much of a surprise. 60% of Japanese guys currently have no girlfriend. Three yeah. out of every five Japanese males have no girlfriend. And the women in Japan are only marginally better off. Uh, so, what's the problem? Too many MMOs? I, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of weirdness in the country where they uh, subsist on 2D girlfriends, as they put it. In other words, they fall in love with the, uh, the pixels in their dating sims. Uh, oh or they fall in love with anime characters. Y- you should see some of the weird celebrations they have for birthday parties of anime characters. I I love watching anime. I can't say I know when any of them were born. Or drawn. Or whatever the frick you want to call it. But I mean, 50% of Japanese women have no boyfriends. No male friends, even. I mean, the, the thing I gather from this is as long as you stay away from Fukushima, if you got a few thousand dollars to burn, go to Japan and get yourself laid. I mean, I can understand, like, as close to falling in love with a fictional character as you can get. Like, if I could marry Dean Winchester, I would, but I'd still have a boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, there there have been people, I believe, in Japan, China, and Korea that have they've gone to weddings where they're dressed up in tuxedos and they're kissing their DS. I've seen the photos. Um, oh, my God. Oh, wow. You know, this is apocalyptic, though. I mean, if you consider that an average of 50% of the young people in that country have no friends of the opposite sex and no relationships, where is their population going to go? Their population um, go it's already fast. been a well-known fact that Japan's birth rate is declining horribly. It's considered a national crisis. Yeah, and there's a lot of people that they prefer 2D women over 3D, whether that be the problem of aging or just apparently they don't like the idea of arguing in the least. I, I, I don't know what to say. They're probably going to have... If it keeps going that way, they're going to have to bring back some form of arranged marriages. That, or this could be the first country that has a population full of clones. That too. Well, I mean, you don't necessarily have to make clones. You can... you got to do something here. I mean, you can donate... It is possible to donate eggs, and it's obviously it's possible to donate sperm. So. Well, you know, the other thing that could happen is that means that the Chinese don't have to launch any strikes. They just have to wait. <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. The U.S. will happily go in and repopulate Japan. There's no problem. <laughs> hey, if they offer that kind of program, I will volunteer, man. I, I will help. <laughs> oh, I just figured they'd wait for them to all die out, or mostly, and then they'd be like, okay, Japan's ours. Could you imagine if they actually did that? Suddenly there's an influx of foreigners trying to help repopulate the area. All of a sudden, my <laughs> you know, my foot, five foot eight ass goes walking around. Either I'm a rogue, like, rookie sumo wrestler, or they swear some kind of shaved ape is walking down the street. Maybe they're just going to do away with their populace altogether and just have robots. <laughs> that hug people and bark. Yes. <laughs> oh, boy. Hey, you know what? I'd buy a purse com. <laughs> <laughs> so you'd be getting the Liam Hemsworth version? No. <laughs> Can I have a Chris Hemsworth version? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we'll get you a Thor vibrator. Mm. Uh, did you guys know that there was nearly a different uh, James Bond after Sean Connery? 
I mean, everybody knows that it was eventually handed around to a few different actors. The odd thing was, Dick Van Dyke, yeah. Dick Van Dyke was asked to be James Bond. Hmm. Really? I can't imagine that. Uh, he was on the Kevin Pollock cast show, and during a two-hour men- uh, conversation, he mentioned that uh, Albert Broccoli, the producer who first brought 007 to the screen, uh, made him an offer. Uh, at the time he was doing Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, Sean Connery had spoken about leaving the Bond pictures, and uh, Van Dyke said he had done several at the time, and Broccoli actually called me into his office and asked if I wanted to be Bond. Yeah. And uh, he, apparently Broccoli loved his British accent, you know, referring to the Cockney accent that Van Dyke used in Mary Poppins. And Van Dyke asked Broccoli, have you heard my British accent? And Broccoli said, oh, right, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> really? Apparently, that's that's the story he told, anyway. Huh. Interesting. I haven't... Yeah, I've seen Mary Poppins, of course, but so long ago that... Isn't that kind of an amazing story when somebody in charge of a major group of movies asks you to do something, then you say, wait, have you seen my movies? And then he says, all right, I've seen your movies. Get out! <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least he Kind honest. of makes you wonder just how much thought was put into this. Well, he was English. Maybe he had a few lagers before the conversation. <laughs> There was someone else that was going to be James Bond instead of Sean Connery. For the life of me, I can't remember who it was. Mm, that may be trivia for later. I have a feeling you're right on that, but I don't recall who. I will look it up and get bring it back next week. Okay. Um, how about this for an interesting story? There was a man that tried to transport fish in his pockets. Okay. How Live. <laughs> well, it was a Vietnamese man tr- trying to smuggle tropical sea life in his pants. In his pants. And he was thwarted when New Zealand airport officials noticed his pockets were leaking water. <laughs> <laughs> he had dripping slacks, and the police in Auckland, <laughs> New Zealand, stopped him, and they he told them that he was thirsty and carrying water from the plane. He had seven fish in plastic bags in his pockets. Genius. This isn't quite as weird as the guy that had birds strapped to his legs, but this is still pretty damn odd. And uh, he's facing charges that have up to penalty or up penalties of up to five years in jail or seventy-eight thousand dollars. I assume these were rare fish. Uh, they were all they were unidentified species of chichlid. I don't know what that means. Huh? Chichlid. C i c h l i d. But apparently Australia and New Zealand have some of the toughest laws regarding the transport of live animals. So, sucks Even to be him. the animals that are, you know, inhabiting those places. I don't know. I can imagine a fish in that bag just going, get me out of here. I'm sitting right next to his junk. Get me out of here. <laughs> this is not cool. Uh, let's see. In the Batman movie news, somebody has created a Hollywood collectible that fits under the why fuck why category. Uh, uh-huh. there is a life-size prop, 750 edition, of the sonar cowl from the Batman and Robin movies, the George Clooney film. Wait, what? I the thought you were going to go with Batman, and I was going to be <laughs> more interested. <laughs> I don't know why someone asked for this, but it is a prop from the, it's a replica prop from the Batman and Robin movie, oh. which happens to be the one with, um, Poison Ivy and Mr. Freeze. I actually read an article about George Clooney hold, having a picture of himself as Batman hung up in his office as a reminder of not to do movies like that. Yeah, I read yeah. that story myself. I've it, read that, too. <laughs> that that was just you know know your role and <laughs> shut your mouth basically. Uh, also, someone reve- revealed some uh, concept comic book art as Ben. A- if, <laughs> wow, it is late. Of Ben Affleck as Batman. Um, I I don't know. I'm still just waiting to see some of the tests to see if this is going to be any good before I say anything. But uh, Kevin Smith is loving the idea that one of his best friends is Batman. As he put it, he bought Ben Affleck's house when he moved to L.A., so he bought Wayne Manor. <laughs> uh, also, the uh, the poster's been revealed for the new Transformers 4 film Michael Bay is doing. As oh. well as a name. It's being called Transformers 4 The Age of Extinction. Uh, also along that line, uh, they've officially confirmed that the Dinobots are going to be in this one. Yep. Yeah. Which I find kind of interesting, since how uh, Michael Bay absolutely hated the idea of Dinobots. Yeah, but this is the producer talking, which means the guy that puts up the money, so he uh-huh. usually gets final say. <laughs> what were you going to say, V? 
I, I don't under... I guess it's a fake dinosaur. Uh, like, the... Not, like, flesh just looking like one. No, the Dinobots in Transformers lore are a mini-group of Autobots who... Their alternate forms are... For, they go from robot to dinosaurs. They're kind of hyper-powerful compared to the others. Okay. It's one of those things that was really interesting in the 80s as a kid, and it carries over when you're an adult. That's all, that's all I can tell you. All right. But you are correct. They don't have skin. They're robotic, metallic dinosaurs. Yeah. Okie dokie. I can live with that. Yeah. It, as long it, as they don't turn into flesh magically. Well, well this no. was... No, the, no, that was Beast, beast Wars. Yeah, the, the Dinobots were kind of the first part where uh, they fell out of the whole alternate form as a disguise motif and just went with, what's fucking cool? <laughs> you know what's cool? It turns into something with teeth. Let's go with that. I like and that. And fire. <laughs> Don't complicate it. Uh, did you guys hear that there's a rumor Sony is going virtual with a, with a new device for the PS4? Oh, what was that thing called? The Oculus? Yes. Well, they want to make it a device similar to that, apparently, or at least that's the rumor, to go with the PlayStation 4, since the, the Xbox is coming with a Kinect-type device. In other words, they're looking for an alternative interface they can use. Uh... I don't know if that's a good idea, because a lot of yeah. people are already wary about the whole Kinect thing. Coming with Xbox. I, I, I think we're going to have to wait and see if the if the Oculus itself actually works before they come out with something like this. Uh, no, uh, the, I've heard reports about it. Some, they're saying there's a lot, saying a lot of good things, but it's uh, pretty much one of those things you pretty much have to sit down to, in order to use because it uh, can be disorienting. Uh, that's what I've heard. I mean, it is a, a pair of small monitors up close in your face. You know, I'm not going to deny that. But the, I guess the problem is if they wait for Oculus to come out first, they can argue what's the worth in coming out with it at all, so they may want to strike first. It, again, though, it's a rumor. Don't take it as fact until we actually get an announcement. Mm. Uh, let's see, and Sony is working hard to bring exclusive content to the uh, the PS uh, network and PS4. Uh, 21 companies are supposed to be bringing content s- exclusively to the PlayStation, including Activism Blizzard, uh, Atlas, Bungie, Capcom, Disney Interactive, Ubisoft, and Rockstar Games. Mm-hmm. That's not a bad list. Well, what kind of exclusive things from those titles? That's the arguable part, is we don't exactly know. Well, it it could next... be anything from a brand new game that won't make it to any other network or a format, or it could be as little as exclusive DLC add-ons to specific games. I was more as a, if they're exclusive to th- that system, how long was it going to stay exclusive to it? Uh, who knows? I don't know what kind of contracts they signed. This is just word of the partnership, but no details about their uh, their actual partnerships. And uh, the Xbox One is going to launch officially in 13 markets on November 22nd of this year. So those of you with 500 burn, now you know where to find it. Uh, There was also a story that came out that apparently the Xbox One is going to have the capability to have up to eight wireless controllers hooked up to it. That actually sounds kind of fun. Yeah, that sounds great for party games, but there was a question brought, and it's a good question, of what is the actual use of that? Party. Party. Of what? I, I don't actually see that being quite useful. I, um, I, I guess it depends because I've never seen a game that actually has eight interfaces before. I want to know if there's something that actually has this as a plan first. Rock Band could probably. Yep, I was that. just going to say another Rock Band. Because Rock Band has, let me think if I can think of the instruments. Uh, first of all, you have a guitar plus pro guitar. You have the keyboard. You have the drums. You have vocals, and then you have backup vocals. Yeah, but Rock Band was kind of a special case because they, the, what they did was they slaved three controllers so that you could have the uh, the microphones, but they didn't count the actual score. And even if you uh, even if you count that game, when you tally it all up, there's still not eight interfaces on the game itself. But there could be if they didn't do it that way. There could be, but considering they discontinued making the game, I don't think they're interested in making one. True. But someone else could do something in a similar vein. Uh, yeah, like I said, I, I, I see the interest in something like this. I just want to know that there's going to be an actual use for it. Well, um, if they I built know. it, then they're obviously advertising it to the different game companies saying, hey, we want, we're want we putting eight controllers on this thing. So, you know, you might want to think about some uh, big party games and stuff like that and you yeah. know, so forth. I, I'm well, sure that it will drum up interest. Well, I'm just kind of... Thinking if you could do that, maybe 
there's some technology incorporated in there that allow two systems to interact with each other. Well, this could also be... Well, it's not two systems. This is designed for one system, eight interfaces. So it, it removes the idea of having to LAN party something. Um, <clears throat> but there, this may also be one of those weird pissing contests like the uh, the rumor about the Oculus device for Sony because it's been confirmed that the PS4 can only have up to seven controllers connect to it. <laughs> So yeah, maybe this is just somebody at Microsoft going, guess what we did? <laughs> yeah. Well, the other thing, too, is, of course, that I can't think of... The, it's very rare to actually find co-op games come out for uh, your consoles anymore. Yeah. They, they don't really seem to like those. You know, I, I assume it's, it's due to the fact that game developers are looking at it going, well, if we release a game with co-op, then that's one last game that somebody else has to buy. We're losing money on it. Uh, that's the only reason. I mean, Borderlands has a uh, a co-op, and you know, Halo has co-op. But I can't really think of a lot of co-op games that have really been coming out for the consoles lately. Well, I wonder it's if that's always what... just a oh yeah, you can co-op on on uh, uh, by uh, having two systems and linking them together. You know, you have to buy two copies of the game. Well, that That's may not be necessarily a program, uh, a programming glitch or an oversight so much as a change in uh, buying habits. I mean, with the advent of Steam and PC gaming coming back around, they may just be simplifying their problem by instead of adding a co-op feature into the console games, they're just adding the co-op uh, online capability across platforms. Well, uh, I think it's more of a uh, just money situation for them. It's they, it, they want you to buy more copies of the game uh, rather than having one person buy the game and then two people can play on it. Well, that's not the only issue. We discussed before how it's like the Batman games don't have multiplayer, but you'd have to lower the amount of pixels by a pretty serious degree to get it done. I don't know. They're doing it for the Ninja Turtles. Yeah, I sent you the report on how much that game blew. You didn't check your Facebook? No. That game rated as a 2.5 out of 10. Mm. I still want to actually play it. <laughs> uh, you may want to check the videos, because it... Yeah, wow, that was really rough to suffer through. Uh, let's see. Astronomers have spotted a cosmic caterpillar 6 trillion miles long. And, no, this isn't some kind of creature that encountered the Enterprise. It's, a. Uh, it's a protostar. It's a massive gas that's supposed to eventually produce a star. They say it may be a star in its very early evolutionary stages, so we could actually see how something in the universe occurs. Hmm. Uh, it's within the Cygnus constellation. Again, the more stuff they check out with these long-distance telescopes, the more interesting shit we're finding out there. I'm sure a lot of people are asking, well, how's this going to get me extra lives? It's not what the idea is about, so this is just interesting shit to us. And uh, in news that may affect gamers to some degree, did you guys hear that the heir of Red Bull was uh, wanted for murder? No. What? Well, not murder, a hit-and-run death. Oh. The heir oh. of Red Bull is a uh, young man from, I believe, Bangkok. Uh, his name is Voryuth Vudiv... V- v- you. you Vidha. Woo! Uh... The, he's a 30-year-old who says he's on a business trip in Singapore and he's unable to return to Thailand for indictment because he fell ill. Yeah, in this country we call that bullshit. <laughs> but uh, he's being indicted on the hit-and-run death of a policeman. Ooh. Ooh. You may want to extend that business trip, sir. Uh, although they're, it's, it's rather kind. They say that uh, reckless driving uh, and not stopping to help... You know what? That carries a maximum of 10 years in Thailand. But then again, those are Taiwanese prisons, and those places, they, they don't offer three hots in a cot. So, yeah, yeah I don't think he's going to want to return home anytime soon. I, I would almost put money on that. Uh, Mark Waite is an infamous comic writer. Uh, he's been very big into the digital advent of comic books. Although he kind of had a bit of a reversal because he actually bought into a brick-and-mortar store. Uh, he bought a uh, place, I believe, out in Indiana. Hmm. So it's uh, Muncie, Indiana. Okay. Uh, it was him, his life partner, Chrissy Blanche, and uh, another uh, 
another partner. Uh, it's it's one of those things where it's not necessarily big news, but it's one of those places where if you're in Indiana, maybe you ought to stop by. You can see a, a really famous comic book uh, writer given half a chance. It was already an existing place. Uh, also, Marvel has released several teasers for their new series uh, spinning out of Infinity called Inhumanity, where apparently there's a bunch of new Inhumans popping up across the planet. Uh... It was really interesting because they released teasers one at a time that says, Is he? Are they? Is she? Are we? Uh, Out of Infinity, there's going to be an event where the thing that gives the Inhumans their powers is released globally, so all kinds of descendants of the Inhumans are suddenly revealed. Oh, fun. Uh, Speaking of which, I read Infinity 2 this week. That Uh. took a frickin' turn. I did not expect at all. Uh, Thanos made a demand of the Inhumans. He wanted all Inhumans between the ages of 16 and 22 killed, otherwise he was going to destroy their city. I know some people will listen to that and say, that's awfully Jewish, sir. (laughs) But uh, it turns out Black Bolt met up with uh, the rest of the, the Illuminati, the New Avengers. He figured out what Thanos wanted. Thanos is trying to kill his own son. He has a son? That's what I said. Apparently he does who may be hiding somewhere among the Inhumans. Uh-huh. Uh, another kind of flippant, weird news. <clears throat> I was reading uh, the Battle of the Atom uh, oh, storyline. that was fun. That yeah. was fun. Uh, the, one of the future X-Men, Zorna, the one with the mask, she took off her mask. It's freaking Jean Grey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That was a shot across the bow. I'm still wondering which one that is, though. I don't know if that's the one, if the one from the modern timeline survived, or if that's the young one survived and grew up. I'm I'm leaning on the one, the young one that survived and grew up. Well, we'll see. It's still early on in the series, and there's going to be a lot of details coming soon. Uh, in other nerd news, uh, everybody knows over Labor Day weekend is one of the is one of, if not the absolute biggest nerd convention in America, Dragon Con. Goes on in Atlanta, Georgia. Takes over, I believe, three or four hotels that are interconnected. And if you do not have a Dragon Con badge, you're not allowed in the hotels. Oh, damn. Yeah. I mean, other conventions like Anime Expo say they take over an area. No, Dragon Con takes over. uh, Almost unmitigatedly. Here's the funny thing. Uh, The local businesses in the Atlanta area, they suffered a crisis of tech support during the weekend. Oh. The problem is, is that so many nerds are busy at Dragon Con, there were several businesses that could not handle shit while they were gone. That's hilarious. Uh, there, <laughs> there was one person <coughs> who said, I've been trying to get our firewall administrator, Sylvia, to talk to me through cha- changing the VLAN trunk configuration, but she keeps texting me back, I just hugged the fifth and seventh doctors! <laughs> or she sends me photos of her dressed up as some character called Hit Girl. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> this poor guy, he actually said at the end of the interview, we should really just temporarily shut down our business every year this time. <laughs> Company-funded trip. <laughs> well, it's over 50,000 nerds gathering in one area. And Anime Expo says it has more. I would bet that they probably inflate their numbers a bit because, yeah, three hotels full of people, 50,000 sounds about right. There was another one who said our DNS server is down and our lead computer tech, Wendell, is down in Atlanta with his whole team getting their photo taken with Xena, Warrior Princess. (laughs) Damn. Oh, you gotta look. The only thing I can say is they did it to themselves by approving these people's vacation times all at one time. Well, it's not like you can really plan that deep ahead, but, I mean, there is something to be said about asking your tech support person for help and all you're getting back is pictures of the lightsaber they bought. Again, if they're on vacation, you're the ones that approved the vacation. Eh. Your fault. Oh, well. Uh, Do you guys hear that Dark Horse was putting out a comic book this week of the Star Wars? Yeah, the uh, George Lucas' original idea for it, I believe. Yeah, his very first script that has uh, several notable changes from the movies that were eventually produced. Uh, Such as? Uh, well, let's Han Solo's a green alien? Yeah, um... Luke Skywalker is now uh, and it's, old, he, he's an old general. Uh, Anakin Starkiller and his father, Kane. Uh, C-3PO still looks effeminate in gold. That hasn't changed, really. 
Uh, apparently, it's not just the Jedi that have lightsabers, though. There are no lightsabers. Uh, but here's the difference. The Jedi aren't the only one with what they call laser swords. Stormtroopers have them, too. Apparently, it's much less uh, Old West kind of gunfighters with uh, warrior monks running around. Uh, more to everyone is Errol Flynn types. Kind of yeah. like that better. It's an interesting idea. The The picture they put up is pretty nifty because it looks like even uh, the character that Darth Vader was spun out of, he looks like... Um, how can I put this? Think an evil... Uh, think an evil monk with, like, a Japanese warrior mask on. It's not a full helmet. It's just one breathing piece of, on his face, basically. Mm. But it has, like, these uh, these weird fang-style teeth sticking out of the grill. It, it's kind of yep. awesome to look at. You know, I, I'm, I'm going to read this. I'm curious. I've said I'm not, I'm not a heavy Star Wars fan, but I'm very curious about this. I'm a bit curious as well. Uh, there is a series that I did pick up this week that I did read because of the title. It, it made me curious in the description. Uh, the title of the series is God is Dead. Uh, it's being written by Jonathan Hickman and, and uh, being done by Mike Costa. They're two pretty notable comic book uh, creators. I was a little curious because their description said, this isn't what you think it is by the title. This is more or less what would happen if God came up and slapped the coffee right out of your hands. What would you do? And the story is really nifty because it is literally gods from different pantheons who are tired of being ignored. Huh, I like that. Yeah, when you think about our modern world, you don't speak much about, like, the Greek pantheon or the Chinese pantheons or the Indian gods or, you know, the the multitude of other religions out there. A lot of it is Judeo-Christian. So the idea is all these guys are pissed off that they're being ignored, so they've agreed to split up the world amongst themselves, and they're going to start creating some damn havoc. I like that idea. I. I'm frankly really, really tired of the obsession everyone has with the Judeo-Christian mythologies. Oh, I, I think this this sounds like a fun indie treat. It's being launched by, uh, it, or it's been launched, I should say, by Avatar. It just came out this week. Hmm. It's amazing how when we have these conversations, V comes up with these gems, and she says, I don't really read... Com- Ooh, I'd read that. <laughs> <laughs> if it's something... Speci- like, if it's themed, I'm more likely to read it. Ah, okay. Uh, speaking of theme, Jennifer Lawrence says that Mystique is mutant and proud by X-Men Days of Futures Past. Apparently, Mystique's evolution isn't going to be arrested, as so many film character evolutions are. She's discovered her mutinous. She's okay with it. Now we're going to find out what happened to turn her into such a vicious killer by the time of the, uh, the I guess you could say, the main trilogy of X-Men movies. I like that. Mm-hmm. I, I always appreciate when it seems like filmmakers have a plan. You gotta admit, it's like... It's kind of like The Matrix. When they first did that, they had a serious plan. Then they decided to get paid for the second and third, and you could see there was no idea where they were going with this. <laughs> you know, you know you've done this before. Oh, fuck you, I just got here. What happened? Um... Hey, Steve. Mm-hmm. Anyone around there still play uh, Fantasy Star Online too? Uh, Jared's trying to get into it. Yeah. The PC version? Yeah, there's a PC. Yeah, tell him to watch himself. Sega's gotten into massive trouble after an update to the PC edition of Fantasy Star Online 2 came out, which began wiping user hard drives. Ooh. What? Apparently, with the most recent update, the game's launcher began randomly deleting unrelated folders from their PCs, some saying that the launcher took it upon themselves to free up tens of gigabytes of space by deleting all. Wow. Uh, The reports say the updater freely began deleting its way through uh, documents and settings, program files, and Windows itself. (laughs) Uh... Wow. Oh, it gets even... They skipped past their QA department? Uh, well... They, they call it Sega quality these days. But apparently, Sega has responded to the problems, and in recompense for this issue, they have offered coupons of up to $50 in the Sega network. Oh, wow. $50! Wow, sorry, you're going to have to spend half a day putting all that stuff back. Um, would you like another game? Well, plus, <laughs> some data is just not, uh, you know... Yeah, yeah that's what we call yeah. lawsuit. Oh, it's not necessarily a lawsuit, it's an accident. It's not like they did it with Malice. But this is notable because they say that this may be the first time in a while that they've heard of an online game that makes them wish they were playing Final Fantasy XIV. <laughs> Damn. 
Yeah, no, I think we got told that the gear because Jared just really hasn't had time to get on the computer to do anything. Yeah, you may want to tell him to watch out for that one, and uh, you may want to email Garrett while you're at it. Uh, another video game news, Disney's Infinity, their new game that uh, is kind of like uh, the Skylanders game that's been out for a while. Uh-huh. They're seeing brisk sales. They're actually having trouble keeping it on shelves right now. Nice. Uh, the, one of the more popular things after you get the main pack, the one of the most difficult ones to find is apparently um, the Violet from The Incredibles. Huh. Uh, the initial pack is $75. They get you the game board and three initial figures, and then you can buy uh, other figures for about 15 bucks a pop, uh, which is arguably a good deal since you get like three to four new hours of gameplay with each figure you pick up uh, subsequently. Uh, this has been really highly touted because apparently they have a very detailed sandbox system. So, it, it may be one of those... I may look this up because this is this does intrigue me the more I've seen of it. It's not a graphic powerhouse, but if you can actually create a sandbox where you can actually create new sub-games, including first-person shooters or racing or flying, I'm intrigued. I always love things that can challenge your creativity. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. I found an article that has seven reasons why Heroes of Cosplay is terrible. Only seven? Uh, these seven are the main pervasive problems of the series. Uh, we can break these down as we go. Uh, it says number seven, cosplay is actually a fun hobby, something the series doesn't even pay lip service to. I've, I've, yep. I've said repeatedly, this series has no element of fun to it. Everyone's too damn serious and too, uh... Too pissy and moany. Uh, Not everyone. <coughs> yeah, majority of them are. Well, it says their con- their concept of com- competitive cosplay is insane. They've kind of point out the fact that uh, the way the series portrays it, these people are trying to earn a living by winning uh, cosplay competitions. And the uh, writer of this article did point out that most cosplay competitions don't put up cash. No, not at all. They put up other prizes, so the only way to make money doing this is to eBay the stuff you get. And odds are, it's not going to match the you know three hundred yeah. to two thousand dollars you put in a costume. Uh, the concept of being a professional cosplayer is unrealistic. That's kind of true when you think about how many cosplayers there are and how few actually do this as a full-time job. I think yeah, it's kind of an I, I mean, moron. Ex- essentially, I mean, the, the very definition of professional is not something you can really apl- apply to contradicts this. contradicts the idea of this thing being a hobby. Well, Yaya Han, the, the brainchild behind this, uh, is one of the few that's a potential that is a professional cosplayer. This is what she does to make money. But at the same time, that's not something most people can attain because, uh, I mean, there's a lot of people who put together really interesting costumes, but still, these companies, when they're looking for mascots, they're more likely to go to professional sources. Uh, Let me see. They said that masquerades are pointless, which is kind of true. Unless you really have an interest in costumes in general, the masquerades are not something most people I know at least want to sit through. Uh, I've even heard of some websites, and when they do reporting, people will draw straws to see who has to cover the masquerade, because that's three hours they're not getting back. <laughs> Damn. Uh, they said that the producers have no real concept of the story of the show. I guess that's true, because this, the show has no story. That's apparent. And um, the number one issue they had was, stop abusing the Anime Expo B-roll! Which is true. I've watched three episodes of it, and every time they show a scanning shot, it's of the Anime Expo of this year. <laughs> I can almost tell you where I've seen specific costumes on the floor. I may have actually passed by their film crew a couple times. Damn. Did you see yourself on there at all? Of course not. You think they're going to videotape my bald butt when they've said that men don't have dynamic costumes? <laughs> and besides, if, if I was there, I was dressed up as either Bass Armstrong or Luke Cage. There's nothing they, that was complicated enough for them to care about. Yaya Han would probably decry me as a faker. Uh, this was a story that really kind of chapped my ass a bit. Uh, did you guys hear about Batwoman? Yes. Uh, yes, I think so. The, uh, I the, think Jesse told me about this. The primary writers of the issue have said that the, as of the, the 26th issue, that will be their last one. Because the issue was they kept getting editorial changes from the last minute. So they feel that they can't put together a great story if they keep getting all these last moment changes just before they have to send their stuff to press. That is a serious problem, but... Th- their their point is a little more acute because Batwoman is arguably the most prominent gay character in all of DC. Ever since she, this v- current version started, she's been a lesbian, a very prominent lesbian. Apparently, some of the issues the writers have had is that P- 
people above the editorial staff, which would turn out to be DC management, keep telling them that Batwoman is allowed to get engaged, but she cannot get married in DC continuity. Yeah, I huh. heard about that. Yeah. That's... <sighs> isn't that the... angry, you can't, you actually. You can't hear it, but I'm shaking my head. Oh, isn't that the ultimate in double standards? Yes, she can be a lesbian. Yes, she can get engaged. Civil unions only. What the frick? I thought comic books were where you went to see the uh, the progressive liberals in all these uh, in all art forms. Apparently, apparently not DC. Yeah, we still apparently have some assholes out there. And I have not read Batwoman, but I've always kind of appreciated the idea that there is this brand new character, one who is not one of the people that Bruce Wayne has a bad touch lawsuit with. <laughs> and not only that, but I mean, she's still putting her life on the line. She's a gay character, and the idea that she's gay doesn't seem to really play out too deep into the stories and interactions she has, but one of the few interactions she does have as a gay character cannot be carried to fruition. That's really effed up. Yes. Yeah. It just doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't, especially when you hear the next story I got. Harley Quinn is getting an issue zero for her series, and several of the most prominent writers and artists are coming back to do this. Here's the thing. There's a competition where somebody out in fandom can draw a, a, one of the pages of Harley Quinn Zero. But they're given very specific guidelines as to what they have to draw. They're given page 15, and it's going to be four panels. The first panel has to be Harley on top of a building holding a large detached cell phone tower in her hands as lightning is striking just about everywhere except for her. Okay, sounds weird. But uh, she can't believe what, she looks at us like she can't believe what she's doing and is beside herself, not happy. In other words, she's doing that whole breaking the fourth wall thing. The second panel is Harley sitting in an alligator pond on a little island with a suit of raw chicken on, rolling her eyes once again, and she cannot believe where she has found herself. We see the alligators ignoring her. The third panel is her sitting on a, in an open whale mouth, tickling the inside of it with a feather. She's ecstatic and happy like it's the most fun she ever had. Now, remember what I said about the Batwoman story and how she's a gay character that can't get married? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Okay, this is going to turn you on your heads, because the fourth panel you're allowed to draw is Harley naked in a bathtub with toasters, blow dryers, blenders, and appliances dangling above the bathtub, and a cord that will release them all. Her expression (laughs) is one of, oh well, I guess that's it for me, and has resigned herself to the moment that's going to happen. So we have a gay character that can't get married, and then we have a contest where uh, where the fans can draw the ultimate cheesecake of one of comic book's most prominent female characters. Ready That's going to gonna be fun for a lot of people. Yeah, can, can you see how effed up this is on the scale of one to what the fuck? Yeah. Uh, so if anybody out there wants to be an artist, a professional comic artist, go ahead and submit. But i got to tell you, this is some real double standard bullshit. Hey, Jared. <laughs> you going to tell him about all this now? <laughs> i give him a shot. Okay. Uh, let's see. There's an idea as to how to get astronauts to Mars. Oh? Uh, they're talking about putting together a hibernation pod for the trip. Hmm. Wow, sci-fi, sci-fi now. Uh, more or less, they're talking about, uh, it it could be a 20 or 30 year trip. Or, uh, excuse me, they expect to be able to get there in 20 to 30 years, but I believe the trip would take somewhere around three years, so the idea to alleviate some of the the claustrophobia and the issues of long-term space travel would be hibernation. Uh, uh, there's a concept of it. It, it almost looks like a, a moon lander with a long pod attached to it. I guess that would be the living quarters. Um, it's not a bad idea, but I am from that period where every time I read about this going to Mars in a hibernation pod, am I the only one that's thinking Hal is going to fuck this up? <laughs> <laughs> or are we going to be invaded by aliens? You know, or... even worse, it's going to be an, even worse. It's going to be an Apple operating system, and your iPod f's up and just jettisons all of you. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you have to have you have to try sometime. It's probably gonna fuck up, but I know. I just I I don't want to be on that ship. I kind of do. You know, and I don't know what's worse: the computer that can mess it up and just decide one day, well, they're boring. Let's just put it from out here. Or if they happen to do it in that format where there's one guy actually flying the ship and he just gets bored enough where he just says, "Let's see what happens if I pull this." Dink. Well, what I could see working and has been de- tip- depicted in a number of science fiction things is the concept of rotating schedules. Like, one person is awake for a certain period of time, and then they run the ship and everything, and then they go to sleep and wake the next person up, and so on. Yeah, I just... I, unfortunately, it's up there to me with Sword Art Online. I like the idea of a full-dive video game, but with people running it, there's too much chance of abuse. 
Yeah, but you wouldn't want a, just a computer running it either. No. It turns into a real catch-22 for me. Uh, there's some updates being released to the Marvel Heroes uh, online MMO. Apparently, the 1.2 version makes it an almost entirely new game, as they put it. Uh, they added a lot of features. They apparently also worked with some of the balance issues. Uh, some of the new aspects were that apparently you can call in support characters to help you out at, at times. Uh, an example was uh, Mind Blasting Professor X was teased as uh, one support character. Hmm. Uh, they also introduced a new prestige system that challenges players to reset their heroes in exchange for special colors for their in-game display. Uh, they also added the idea of symbols for people who are in networks or guilds. I, I don't know. I may have to take another shot at this and see if that actually helped anything. No, it's not. You haven't I've even tried it. Wow, <laughs> it's not. You don't know that. Huh? There have been some things that have been rebooted and worked. Apparently, Final Fantasy XIV is enjoying some pretty brisk sales from their reboot. Reviews haven't been too bad either. It's like I keep saying, you don't know till you try it. Yeah, well... And it's, it's free. Once it's... they encounter the player base, I imagine a lot of people uh, lose interest. Well, it's free. It's not like it's going to cost you anything to try. True. Yeah. The thing is, I go back there and it still feels like I'm playing Diablo. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm done. Oh, okay. Did you have to rain on parades already? Yeah. Okay. Remind me not to invite you to my birthday party. Uh, there's a rumor as to actors that may have been cast in lead roles for Star Trek Episode Seven. Uh, there's already a rumor that Emperor Palpatine will be returning, which I don't quite know how that works. Mm. Uh, Latino Review was the one who apparently broke this, and it may sound like a ridiculous website, but Latino Review is actually pretty dead on when it comes to rumors. If they're not dead on, they're pretty close. And according to them, uh, Ksenia Solo, who's been on Black, Squ- Black Swan and TV's The Lost Girl, is being considered for the role of uh, Princess Leia and Han Solo's daughter. Ooh. Hmm. She's, and, go- she's good. The twin Jaina, or are they just going with completely new... They haven't named it, and nobody is quite sure of that. But apparently these are the people they've talked to, but nobody said exactly what they're doing. And they've also had a conversation with uh, Spartacus actor Liam McIntyre, who's... He he did a read for a Jedi role in the movie. Huh. So, not sure what exact roles are up for, but apparently these are a couple people to watch. You never know. Yeah. Uh, Disney won a dismissal of a major frickin' lawsuit. Uh, we talked before about Stanley Media. They're a company that, back in, uh, I believe it was 1998, uh, signed a contract with Stan Lee to make to find ways to uh, make TV shows and movies out of his films. Uh, They kind of went silent for a while, and they've recently brought up a host of lawsuits, even though Stanley himself uh, is no longer a part of the company, that they are owed profits from some of the recent movies that Marvel has put out about their their products. Well, they filed uh, lawsuits in Minnesota and California, both of which were thrown out. They filed a new one in Colorado. And not only did the judge dismiss it, he dismissed it with prejudice, which means they can't amend it and bring it back for another attempt. Mm-hmm. At Damn. least in the state of Colorado. Uh, the argument, basically, that he put up was that uh, Stanley did sign a letter of agreement stating that they were supposed to work on his properties, but there was no renewal of the agreement, and the copyrights on that agreement ran out back in 2005. They didn't file their lawsuits until about 2009 when Marvel movies started making the $600 million to $1 billion. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're SOL, man. Yeah, that's basically what they said. So this company is probably going to fold pretty fast, considering they've done three high-powered lawsuits, and the last one had them going up against Disney. In the <laughs> la- Not only that, in the last lawsuit, they were stupid enough to name Disney as a, a co-defendant in their lawsuit, even though Disney had nothing to do with the original agreements or the movies they talked about. Oh, boy. Hammer, meat, nail. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, we talked a little bit about the RoboCop trailer. We'll see if we can link that up. I'm still curious about it. It has some major changes from what I saw as a kid, but I, I don't have as much issue with that as some people do on the yeah, internet, no, obviously. Yeah, neither do I. Uh, here's a big something that came out recently. A Marvel pr- movie producer hinted that Captain Marvel may become a movie, but they did say that this one was hard. Uh, we have had the discussion where it seems like uh, the movie companies, especially the ones working on comic book properties, have not figured out how to bring a kick-ass lead uh, female to this big screen. 
Some people could argue that they did it with Electra. I would argue that they didn't do it with Electra. Anyone agree with you? See that. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it's not an easy thing to pull off. The, uh, as the... Uh, as the producer, Luis D. Esposito, put it, there's obviously a drumbeat that is banging louder and louder that we want a female lead superhero. We have strong female characters in our films, from Black Widow to Pepper Potts to Peggy Carter, and you never know. Maybe there's an offshoot film with one of them, or Captain Marvel, you know? Which was an odd name to bring up. And mind you, this story came out two days ago. This came out just this afternoon. Katie Sackhoff, uh, everybody at least those in no- nerd circles know her as the most recent Starbuck from the Battlestar Galactica remake. Right. She returned to a YouTube series that she was a part of for a while. It's called the Shomes YouTube. She had a two-hour conversation with them. And uh, in it, she mentioned that uh, Marvel talked to her about doing something. But she also mentioned that Marvel's movie slate is full until Phase 3. They apparently want to talk to her about doing something in the first quarter of next year. Which has got a lot of people uh, questioning what exactly she could be talking about. uh, Because at... uh, she, uh, she's talked from time to time about playing Harley Quinn in a new Batman movie. I could totally see her as That'd Harley Quinn. Here's the thing. She was guarded... Ab- Marvel, well, so. hang on. She was guarded about a lot of things, but when the podcast host brought up the idea of her playing Miss Marvel, she suddenly quickly corrected them and said, she's now known as Captain Marvel. Nice. So either she is a big geek already, or some. this is somebody that may have been talked to about something specific. Yeah. Those are the and two I things we're looking at. I could definitely see her as Captain Marvel. Uh, yeah, there was a picture of her in the in the Riddick film that came out last week that she was a part of. Uh, the still that was given, her haircut actually resembles the current Captain Marvel hair. Hmm. So take it for what you will. For right now, we're going to say that somebody's talking to her, and we don't know what she could be. But uh, her as Captain Marvel, I I would pay thirteen bucks for that. Yeah, I didn't really. I don't care for her character, but I think she's a wonderful actress. She turns out to be a fun human being, too. I've heard her in interviews that she's done on the phone where she complains that she was just pulled over for speeding because she was distracted. <laughs> uh, at the beginning of the show, you guys will have heard a strange clip that sounds like Pokemon on crack. That's almost exactly what it is. I found a YouTube <laughs> series that just started called Pokemon FU Version 1 Lightning Protocol. Yes. Oh, God. So I, uh, I used a little bit <laughs> of that. We were just we'll, watching that last night. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll add a link to that to the show. This I, sh- I, I am amused by that one simply because Pikachu's voiceovers remind me so much of Empowered. I know, that's the first thing that came to my mind. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we'll let you guys make your own decisions. This week's show is kind of a fun what-if scenario because we're going to talk about what kind of stupid superheroes that the four of us may actually be since we've talked about what uh, kind of people... Or what kind of individuals others would be if they gained uh, special superhero powers. Um, I guess I'm going to ask the first basic question. Do you guys think you would be heroes or villains if you suddenly woke up and found out you could bench press a truck? Villain. (laughs) Uh, Okay. I'll let everyone finish first before I justify why I said No, I'm sorry. I just think it's funny. The one skirt in the room says, oh, I'm going to be a bitch. (laughs) I'll be honest with you. I'd probably go hero. Yeah, I I think uh, you'd need to create a third category, lazy. (laughs) Steve would be the guy levitating the remote. You know, come to me, ice cream, come to me. Yes, pretty much. (laughs) If somebody gave me telepathy and telekinesis, God help the world, because I wouldn't. (laughs) Unfortunately, I I know my white knight complex would get in the way. I would have to save people, but I think I'd also be that dick where if somebody's about to run over somebody, I wouldn't be the one that picks up the car and just says, don't do that. I'd be the one that's smashing engine blocks and saying, you're a fucking idiot. (laughs) Yeah. Well... Expand, V. You've got us all curious why you'd be the person to try and break Texas. Okay, so me as a person, I, if just regularly empowered, I would probably be a hero, but with the kind of superpowers I think I would get, I would not be able to stay that way. I'm actually a really generous person. I I have helped my roommate with rent and not asked to be paid back when he was in a tough time. I have picked up a Netflix thing that was on the ground, took it home, and mailed it. But I think that if I had got superpowers, I would just try to fix the world the way I see fit, which most <laughs> oh, people would probably not those. agree with. <laughs> she would be her estimation of Superman, is what she's saying. Yeah. 
We're not saying that's a... Well, actually, that would be a wrong thing. It's almost exactly what we're saying. But it would be interesting, at least. Yeah. I mean, honestly... That's that's kind of the thing too. If if I wasn't sitting back being lazy, then yeah, I mean, what are you going to do with these <laughs> amazing powers that you've gotten? I, I I could definitely see myself, you know, with telepathy and telekinesis, totally going the uh, phoenix empowered uh, uh, white queen route. You know, it's just like, oh, you did that. Well, you need to be punished for it. Oh, what do you mean nobody else knew about it? Well, I know you did it, so you know that there there's definite power abuses and okay. it's so easy to fall into those. Yeah, that's true. I guess so. I mean, I... Well, I've already expanded on what my issues are. I I would be the person that saves you with a frown. <laughs> um, what, do you mean, what do you mean Fox cancelled Firefly? Oh no, <laughs> changing some minds right now. <laughs> Man, if you had time travel and that power... Bring back Gumble to Gumble. You could... <laughs> Actually, that's that's a question I wanted. To... <laughs> oh wow, that's a delayed laugh from a different time zone. Okay. Um, here's a question: If you guys did turn into superheroes and or villains, would you have your own like secret lair? Yes, absolutely. I'm already planning it. Wow, you could wait for me to finish first. <laughs> well, I mean, would you be that person that actually has the cave of memorabilia? Would you be the person that has your trophies? Or would you be that guy that's more like Peter Parker, you know? My couch doesn't flip over into a computer. It's a couch. Yep, that's I me. I would have something very highly functional and fortified. <laughs> and silly. I may have a separate building somewhere, my little bunker, fortress of solitude type thing, but... As for changing my house, no. I think I'd be that person that takes over like an abandoned building, you know, and has a has a generator somewhere. Something like that. You know, I'd add some doors or something, but knowing my luck, I would come back one day and find that the uh, the condemned sign was followed up with, you know, the fact that it was imploded three days ago or something like that. <laughs> or you got uh, squatters. Yeah. Yeah, that well, I I would hope I would be fortunate enough or smart enough to at least add reinforced walls and a door, but uh, no, I, I don't think I would find the mystery dump on the middle of my map screen. <laughs> uh, what would uh, how about th- what would be your superhero name? I wouldn't have one. I have no. Well, but you just go with your name. You would be that badass that just didn't care. No, no, I would probably just try to do everything anonymously. Mine would be really simple. What would that be? Siren. Ooh. Okay. She flying around with no underwear or what? No, <laughs> no, that's not that kind of siren. <laughs> <laughs> I had to take my shot. <laughs> yeah, maybe with no underwear, but. What about you, Jesse? Oh, uh, it would depend on the the power set I got, but probably not. Pick a name, uh, a superhero name. Okay, I almost feel like you have to pick one, otherwise the uh, the media is just going to dub you something stupid. Let me clarify. I don't think say that that's the one I would pick. I don't know if I would pick one. I'm really bad at picking names like oh, okay. that. But well, you could you could do worse. I mean, we're talking about guys that just call fires whatever area they happen to be started in. <laughs> you know, or the old bandit or something stupid like that. You know, m- my luck, I'd be called Mister Red Boots. Uh, Actually, that's kind of a funny name. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Okay. I, I still think Jeremy's uh, personal inspired choice was uh, Rock Rock. <laughs> <laughs> I was having a day. What do you want from me? <laughs> well, the best one was picking Paragon City. Oh, that was Mike. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that, that, that was actually a really good inspired choice. Uh... <laughs> Ooh, okay. How this is going to be a choice, and I'm, I'm interested to hear the result. Spandex or no spandex? Oh hell no! Spandex. <laughs> hell no. I actually have a reason for that, though, because I read a cracked article. I was talking about how spandex actually helps increase blood flow, and I forget what it said it did, but good stuff for superheroes. You said it helped you run faster, and I offered to watch to let you put on a unitard and film this because I want to see if this actually works. <laughs> Well, Are you trying I mean, to outrun the uh, little bit of thing going up your ass crack, or what? I don't understand. <laughs> Running faster now. 
Uh, actually, in all honesty, oh, I'll finish that thought in a minute. Oh Later. no, no, <laughs> I, I want to hear this. Well, you haven't asked us what power we would get yet. That was coming. <laughs> outfit that I think would go with the power that I think I would get, and it's not much of an outfit. So. Okay. Well, I I admit I am not a spandex person. I would probably be that person that puts on like a you know a, a heavy leather jacket and a pair of you know a pair of decent gloves, <laughs> denim like, and boots. Besides for the sex appeal factor, I like tight clothing because it doesn't get caught on shit. But you've read Empowered. <laughs> okay, other than her out <laughs> in general. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have a whole bunch of confused people going, what is he talking about? I have to look at this empowered stuff. <laughs> I, I just... I, I have more respect for my fellow man than to don any kind of form-fitting tight clothing. <laughs> but I'm a girl, so I kind of have to. You know what? I am completely fine with you walking around in spandex. I have no <laughs> objections. Either. <laughs> oh, my God. I've got to take... Okay, um, I, I guess that begs the question, and I'm gonna f- I'm gonna phrase this in a couple different ways. The first one is, if there was a a device that had like an encyclopedia of comic books, superheroes, and villains, and you were allowed to pa- to pick the powers of one, which powers would you pick up? Do I have to go comic book? Uh, I suppose not, but it has to be a preset something. You can't just say I'm gonna be Wolverine crossed with Cyclops, and I'm gonna just laser laser claw all of you. Peter Petrelli's power from Heroes. Oh, okay, so you'd be a sink or a rogue. Yeah, but rogue's power works slightly different and seems a little overpowered to me, so. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that's an interesting choice. Uh, Jesse? Uh, I'll get back to you on this. <laughs> oh no, you're on the spot, dude. Well, I had a pick. And you do. Yeah, that's the thing. Is I got like at least a dozen characters in my head right now. Well, it shouldn't be that hard, then. You just got to pick one. Roll a die. It's <laughs> <laughs> a very nerd answer. I like it. <laughs> that's how I pick what game I'm going to play. <laughs> v is the second coming of Two-Face. <laughs> I think it was boiled down to this generic super strength, super durability. Such as? That's way too generic. More Superman or more Thor? Uh, n- no. <laughs> <laughs> They're the one that were on the list. Well, if you got a more... list, if you got a list, and just name one of them. Uh, thing actually comes to the top of my head right now. The thing? Yeah. You would be Orange Rock? No. <laughs> I can't believe how difficult you're making this. Like you said, I, it was just something generic. I wasn't thinking of something uh, very outlandish or very... Well, I said how powers. specific it was, so... I mean, if you're picking the thing, that means you are super strong and durable, but, you know, you're going to have a hell of a time getting into a bathroom stall. <laughs> Well, we all know that he doesn't actually have to use the restroom. That's a theory. And, of course, we don't know whether or not he produces any orange pebbles at a given moment, either. <laughs> uh, S- Steve, what about you? I'm kind of torn, but uh, honestly... Please tell me you don't have a list of 12. No. No, um... I'm kind of going more uh, uh, Stormwatch-wise, so I'd say either Sunburst or Winter. Hmm. Those are definitely out-of-the-box choices. I like that. Um, if I had to pick from a spinner, I-, I think I'd do something really unexpected for me. I would like to go Cannonball. Ooh, that's a neat one. You know, it's not exactly subtle, but it is something that will get a lot of attention as you're going through the sky. You know, Not to mention being impervious, you know, if you before you master your flight and you just kind of crash into things, well, it's to be expected. Yeah, but I think one of the things I couldn't do that that character does is yell, I'm invincible while I'm blasting. <laughs> you know, I think it'd be something a little more subtle, like, here I come. Uh, you see, uh, jeez. 
I, is there any kind of power type you wouldn't want to have? Uh, the thing. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. <laughs> I would have to say anything that that is would physically deform me. I mean, just because vanity. I hate to say it. Yeah, I admit I would not want to be like a null or you know. You know what? I wouldn't want to be freaking metamorpho. Yeah. The only oh no kind of way! The blob. I would <laughs> Steak is okay. Nothing else is okay. What about you, Jesse? Who wouldn't you want to be? The thing? <laughs> Toad. Ooh. Ooh, no way. <laughs> Galactus. Pink. Not my color. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he switched to purple. He knows where he's going. Okay. Uh, I don't think purple does it for me either. You know, actually, V, I could think of a second character that's a little deformed that I don't think you mind being in. That's Nightcrawler. Yeah, fair enough. I was just thinking that after I said Mystique. I was like, wait, there's another blue person that's not ugly. <laughs> I have to say, the female version of Nightcrawler, I actually think it was his daughter. Yeah, yeah she and was pretty hot. Nocturne, the daughter of Nightcrawler and the Scarlet Witch. That was an interesting idea. I wish I'd seen more of that character lately. Uh, okay. Uh, here, here's a magic question. If you could pick any power or combination of powers, which one would you use? Oh, God. Wow, okay. <laughs> Did you have a nerdgasm or something? I would like super, uh, super intelligence. Like, super, super intelligence, not just regular high intelligence. And, uh, teleportation. The ability to teleport across a large distance, not just in a short range. So, you know, like, from here to California, for instance. You know, the scary thing is, you just you just described one of the Avengers. Which one? Manifold. Manifold. Oh. He can teleport across galaxies, but he doesn't do it by power, necessarily. To him, it's a function of math. Hmm. It, it's not the most expected idea, I know, and I'm sure a lot of people reading it don't understand that, because he was explained in a previous series, but yeah, by mathematical constructs he can get through the universe. It's just... Smart characters have always been my heroes, and mm -hmm. if, I, if I could be super intelligent and like, learn all the sciences and everything, I mean, that would be just... That would be amazing. That I, would be my dream come true. Man, I would be a pain in the ass with that. You're not doing that right. Well, how do you know? Trust me, you're not doing that right. <laughs> Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm thinking maybe I should have chosen Prototype from uh, uh, Ultra Force or whatever that. From the Malibu Comics? I, I, I wouldn't pick anything from Malibu Comics. That stuff was a nightmare in itself. But uh, what combination of powers would you pick, Jesse? To be honest, I never give given this much, you know, much thought. <laughs> I find that all nerds give this thought sooner or later, but mostly that thought is, boy, I'd really like to get laid with that anime chick. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, I never thought. Um, for me, I've always liked powered armor. So I've like, oh god. So you're talking like Iron Man? Yeah, kind of like Iron Man, but I just don't want to be, you know, just a suit. I want to have, you know, powers. Of Beyond that, which is why I think I chose Prototype, because he has powers beyond the suit. Huh. Anything else? Get back to me. <laughs> God, you gotta go to some improv classes or something. What about you, Steve? Oh, well, okay, um... I kind of combined a bunch of superheroes together back when I was younger. Uh, so the Sunburst character, uh, flight, energy projection, more powerful, the angrier you got. Uh, a, just because I think it's kind of an interesting concept having to hold your anger, and especially in combat. Mm -hmm. um, tag, the ability to touch people and freeze them in place. I oh, like so you're talking the uh, the extreme comics one, not the uh, not the Hellion, right? Okay. Um, some form of longevity, uh, 
whether it be uh, you know you could just don't age or something along those lines, but also of course you know healing factor and okay. uh, flight. Telekinesis and telepathy. Th- those would probably be my choices. Wow, so you don't want a Justice League. You do want to be Superman. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I've always been kind of a power gamer, so that kind of stretches over into the... Yeah, not me. I got to pick what I wanted to be. Yeah, might as well go for, you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. See, I'm, I'm a bit more stripped down than that explanation, but... Uh... I would have, if I could pick, I would probably have a couple things that would clash really badly, but to me would be absolutely vital. <laughs> uh, I would want uh, the powers of cannon from Stormwatch, the kinetic blast field and flight. Mm-hmm. But uh, backing it up, I would like the brass armor. Oh, it's kind of freaky, but yeah. Yeah. Um, Brass was a strange character because he was just an average guy who was kind the of janitor, broken down. Da- yeah, he was broken down by nanites and reassembled into not powered armor so much as a living robot. But because the whole thing was initiated by nanites, he could change back and forth. Yeah, he was kind of like a techno organic living weapon. Yeah, that would be me. I think that'd be pretty fearsome to deal with. Especially if you combine the two. Could you imagine what the size of that bazooka would be? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't mind having a, a, some kind of symbiotic-like pr- pr- uh, protection, similar to uh, like the wet works wound up with. Yeah, but I mean, I would probably back that up, because after all, Colossus is my favorite character of all time. Mm. So, it, I, it wouldn't have to all work at once, but I would want that, that set of three going for me. Uh, I... I wonder what kind of villains this would spawn, because even if there are no super villains, you could bet that this would inspire somebody to do something stupid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if the world just didn't turn against you. One man can't have that much power. Uh, I know, okay, like but, we've given, but we've given entire Congress's power, and it's not like they've done anything with it. <laughs> Go figure. I think that's more just the fact that everybody keeps getting in everybody's way. Uh, yeah, that's that's something to be said about that. Uh, man, that was a little shorter than I expected, but I guess it's okay, because it's nearly two hours already. Well, um, mm. What'd Sorry, you say, V? Were you going to finish up? Uh, I was go- I was going to mention a couple other things, because I, uh, you know, we discussed how DC was beginning Villains Month, and I read uh, most of the series that they put out this week. Mm, yeah, some of them were just not worth it. Well, I uh, have one last question to put to the group. Oh, go ahead. Now, we've at, all asked what quest, what powers we would like to get. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. What powers do you think you would get? Like, if you... Um, Radioactive farts. Like, assuming that it was based upon personality traits and existing physiological whatevers. Oh, if it was based on personality traits, I would probably be one of those psychos that as soon as you pissed him off, you would just get angrier and stronger. I think you would be a werewolf. That's probably very apt. I Except I wouldn't be the slinky one. I wouldn't be the one that dives into bushes every time he comes by. As soon as somebody walked by, I'd probably pee on his head and just said, Mine! And keep walking. <laughs> I think I would probably get, you know, my imagination made real. Huh. Uh, yes, that kind. Of, that is the one superpower I always wanted to play in a superpowered game. What, a Proteus? <laughs> um... Reality warping? Actually, uh, far more specific. Uh, the not necessarily that that he his literally his imagination became real. He doesn't have conscious control over it. Huh. So the story I'm writing is similar on that. Um, except I did it with a twist in that uh, basically the character became uh, certain uh, characters from different animes. Uh, but had no control over it. And he himself did not realize that this was happening. It's more of a swap, in a way, uh, in that, you know, this person would uh, disappear, in his place would be an anime character, be it, you know, uh, Ronma from Ronma One Half, or, 
uh, one of the bubblegum crisis suits or so on and so forth. Not necessarily tailored to the specific uh, situation, but just, boom, here it is, make the best of it. And then after the battle is over, all of a sudden this guy regains consciousness. It's just like, why is everything wrecked? <laughs> okay. It sounds interesting. But, uh, yeah, that didn't actually answer V's question. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Steve? What power do you think you get based on personality and traits? Uh... The power to levitate remotes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's what he uh, wants. It, honestly, um... Invisibility. Really? You're always pretty visible. Unless you take a book in the bathroom, then I can never find you. <laughs> no, uh, I just, I tend to fit into the background, especially in groups and so forth. So, yeah, I could see some kind of inability for people to notice me. Oh, okay. Uh, v, I'm, you, you brought this up. I'm curious to hear your answer. I would be either literally a siren or have uh, the power of Alicia Daniels from Misfits, which is basically, the, as Wikipedia describes it, it is forced sexual frenzy by contact. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I wow. Think, I do not think I would enjoy this power, but that is what I think I would get. <laughs> no, you'd enjoy this power. Initially, yes, but uh, I would. It, <laughs> I, I could almost see you dealing with some exes. Stop making me mad. What are you going to do so, about it? Stop pissing me off. You're just a bitch. Okay, that's it. Where are you going? And suddenly she walks out the room, and this guy's best friend suddenly clamors in the doorway. Oh God, I've got to have you. What? Get off me! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just I, I'll deal with the normal version of that. <laughs> And I just, I think if that was super powered, that would just, that would, that would destroy me socially and therefore become villain. <laughs> she would be known as Crotch Rot. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> wow. It's okay. Uh, according to what we've discussed already, I'd probably just be known as the Wizard. So, so. Yeah, so then her sidekick would be the groin spawn. <laughs> I think it'd probably be just that burning sensation. <laughs> oh, I would have to be a crotch rot and her partner too. the clap. <laughs> oh my God. And crabs. <laughs> that's her, that's what they throw out as tracers. You know, it's not spider tracers; it's crab tracers. <laughs> oh jeez, this is taking a turn. There he is. Oh, God. Well, I have actually thought about this quite a bit, so... <laughs> I don't Apparently. know, for some reason it interests me to, to to figure out what people will be once they become superpowered. <laughs> it's, it's always a curiosity, because you can always see those people that you just generally wish they will never be able to break down a wall with their bare hands. And there's always those few out there that I've seen that I, I would honestly be... I would feel much more secure if certain people had the ability to throw a truck off of someone. Yeah. You know, it, it's sad how it's become so few and far between lately, though. Hmm. Because I, I think if the four of us were sitting around the table with superpowers, it'd be one of those weird things where the alarm would go off for 20 minutes before somebody finally said, look, is anyone going to answer that? Fine, <laughs> I'll get it. And then we all get up and go. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> you know. Jesse, you drive. I drove last time. It's Steve's turn to drive. Oh, fuck, I'll drive. God damn. And I'd be so, going, no, I'm flying, so one of you bitches can drive. Let's make a pact. Would we become superheroes or superpowered people? <laughs> Bitten by radioactive paparazzi? We will have the posse, known as the pro procrastinators. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, we, we don't need the posse. That's going to be our superhero name. <laughs> <laughs> no, even better. That'll be the name of whatever vehicle we use to get there. The procrastinator? <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be diesel, and it will go five miles under the speed limit. <laughs> Driven by Aunt Bertha. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God, and what's the first thing that happens? We get out of the car, the uh, the head officer in charge is trying to explain the situation, I'm peeing on his shoes. 
Larry, you gotta <laughs> give him that shoe now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. All right. Um, yeah, as I was saying before, I, I tried reading into Villains Month. I don't know how much of that I could recommend, because there is one major thing I've noticed, and I read about seven of them. I know, a, a bit too many, Jeremy, but, you know, I did. Um, just about all the DC heroes as they've been written in the New 52, not one of them seems to have come from a happy home yet. They've all come from, from, they've all come from some really effed up places. Which is not necessarily to say that no one can, but when I've read about five different series of villains coming from broken homes, that's too common. For an editor to get so pissed off about Batwoman getting married, it is a little weird that nobody's paying attention to the other stuff going on. Yeah. You know, and there's there were some really interesting new ones that came out, like but uh, the Ventriloquist. Did you read that one? Uh, not yet. It was uh, took over Batman and Robin. She's supposed to be a new Batgirl villain. It, it has nothing to do with the uh, the Scarface dummy. This woman has a weird power where she can control people by remote and force them to do what she wants Ooh. Uh, unwillingly. In other words, they're aware that their hand is about to point a gun to their face, but they can do nothing to stop it. She's one of those. Uh-huh. And she's, she has this creepy fixation with her ventriloquist dummy, which she uses her powers to make move on its own, and it has drills popping out of its palms. So you'll watch it, like, crawl up somebody's legs, you know, mobilizing the whole time, then stab these palms into the eyes. It's really... Oh, I, you know, I'm not going to spoil the whole issue, but this is really effed up. Wow. It's one of those... It, it's one of those almost perfect scenarios where I'm going, oh, I want to see more of this, and I can never read this again. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the ventriloquist, Deadshot, um, Poison Ivy, all came from effed up backgrounds. Um, the one that really surprised me, though, was the Joker issue. Oh, he didn't have an effed up background, but... Yeah, no, this... wait, wait, he had an effed up background. That's the thing that kind of broke ground, is that this character for the longest time has had no definitive backstory. He's just been an agent of chaos. They gave him a background. And it was one of those weird things where he was being taken care of by his aunt who kept scrubbing his skin with bleach to get him clean. That's pleasant. Yeah, so they actually... He wasn't dipped in chemicals, he wasn't a psychotic comedian as in previous uh, origin stories, or no origin story. He was literally an effed up kid from a broken house. The backstory wasn't as interesting as that he... During this issue, you saw the rise and fall of his... Of his protege, Jack and Apes, which was a trained monkey. <laughs> Gorilla. But. Yeah. But, uh, it, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about the Joker actually having an origin story after all this time. Yeah. There's something scarier about this thing that wants to murder people coming out of nowhere than the idea that we know where it came from. Does that make any sense at all? A little bit. But, uh, you know, if if everything in the DC universe is going to be so repetitive, I question why you need to go through it. Why do you need an entire villain month if everybody's going to have such similar stories to them? Mm. Well, just... Most people don't grow up and choose to live contrary to society in one way or another. Something has to happen to them to make them either want to burn the world or want to reshape it. I'm not arguing that, but there was about five different stories of all characters that had, that did this because of effed up family lives. There are other circumstances that can happen. That's you know, true. Deadshot was one of the few different ones because his entire family was murdered by mob hitmen, and he was a poor kid on his own who couldn't afford to uh, buy a whole bunch of bullets, so when he stole a gun, he made sure that he only needed one bullet. He actually had a reason for being a premier assassin. You know, it was just kind of a boring issue was the unfortunate part. I mean, the, mm. the most interesting thing I read, actually, out of it all was, uh, besides a ventriloquist, was the uh, the issue involving Relic, the new Green Lantern villain. He apparently came from a universe where people there were using the emotional spectrum similar to Ring Slingers, but they abused it to the point where they collapsed their own universe. Hmm. And because he was at the wall between universes, uh, after it was done, he was thrown out the other side with this massive amount of power. So he wants to stop the ring slingers from, I guess, DC's regular universe from doing anything stupid and breaking the emotional spectrum before they destroy their universe. Except where he came from, he asked and they said no. So this time, he's not asking. He's just going to start killing them. Hmm. 
So they've mm-hmm. created this weird anti-hero that makes me more curious, but it's still not enough to make me buy the Green Lantern because I have to deal with the Green Lantern. So and um, oh, and I read the uh, the marquee issue behind all this Forever Evil, where the crime syndicate took over. Oh, that was interesting. Fairly, I... but it was it was one of those things where it hit a lot of the beats I expected it to hit. There weren't any surprises in it at all. Well, I was more worried about the. I've already predicted how this is going to end, and all of the main villains for each of the members of the Justice League are going to come out and defeat these guys. Well, just about, with the accession of a new Batman. But you want to see Joker coming kind of here and saying, I'm going to f- uh, fuck the order. He's too much of an age. He's too much of a chaotic character. He's not going to join any team unless it's. I know he's he has not, a chance I don't to think he's going to join any team. I think he's going to come in there and say, "Hey well, guys, screw you!" Well, Boom. Well, no. DC already said he's not really going to be involved in all this because it's just not his thing. Okay, I can see um, that. You know, they've said that there's going to be someone in a Batman costume, but they said it's probably not going to be Bruce Wayne. Uh, the Teen Titans are going to run up against the Crime Syndicate, and they're going to get lost in time somehow. So they're kind of out of the picture. Um, this, this falls into the kind of the conversation we had previously about DC rebooting everything but still not updating anything. This, mm-hmm. team that, this team of evil Justice Leaguers has come in is called the Crime Syndicate. Why are they called that? They came from an alternate world where they're in charge. They rule over everything. So how can they technically commit a crime? All they're doing is just overlording. So why aren't they just called the Syndicate? Why do they have to be the Crime Syndicate? It's like the coins they handed out that had Forever Evil written all over them. What the frick? Where they come from, they're not evil, they're just in charge. The be- We've said the best villains are the ones who don't see themselves as doing evil. The best villains are the ones who think they're saving the world by any means necessary. Mm. Mm-hmm. So why are they the crime syndicate? Why does their coin say forever evil? They, they don't really apply to, to this story. I-, I guess I'm asking too many existential questions. No, they're the leg- legitimate questions. It's like, I can't think of an answer. Uh, I, well, it, it's like I said. I, I don't really think that uh, they thought this whole reboot through. They had a chance to update an incredible amount of stuff, like the Reverse Flash, probably the worst villain name I've ever heard. But even though it's a 40-year-old name, they're still using Reverse Flash. Even though the Crime Syndicate started in the 50s, they're still using the Crime Syndicate. You know, there, there's kind of a reason why Jean Grey stopped calling herself Marvel Girl after a time. Yeah. So these are the questions I ask. I guess I'm just asking the wrong ones. Maybe I should be asking why Batwoman should be allowed to get married. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, I I I know I had a plan for a few weeks, but I didn't really have a plan as to what to do for next week. I'm a little thrown. I'm a little thrown on that one. I have an idea. Toss it. Uh, what about the Buffy comics? That's <laughs> one I. Those are ones I actually physically own. So. Uh. <laughs> I, I'm just picking something I own. I, I, no, uh, and nothing against you. I just, I, I, I cannot stand Buffy or vampires or werewolves or any, in any capacity. Well, you're never gonna find a girl that likes Twilight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm honestly actually cool with that. So, I'm curious. I, I, I've been a long-term fan of the Buffy and Angel series. And by I that I mean the TV like series. Angel was much, yeah. but yeah. I've noticed men tend to prefer Angel. No, I I like both series for different reasons. You know, I I like the Angel series because I thought it had the better characters, and I like the Buffy series because you know, knew Allison Han I knew Allison Hannigan growing up. She's still really? high. Yeah, she uh she <laughs> she went to North Hollywood High. Oh. That's cool. Um, I didn't go there the same time as her. What happened was she and my uh, my aunt actually knew each other, and she would drop by the house every now and again. That's awesome. Yeah. So, so jealous. So it was one of those things where after she hit TV, I kept staring at her face just going, I know that for some reason. And then my uncle just went, remember when she used to come by our house? It's like, oh, shit, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> so that girl I had a foolish schoolboy crush on was going to be famous. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Oh well. No, I like that idea. We don't we don't read enough independent stuff in this. I admit because it's a little harder to follow. But that's pretty prominent DC or not DC Dark Horse. So I like that idea. Maybe afterwards we can follow up with the uh, the Serenity follow up. Yeah. That'd be oh cool. yeah. There's... All right. Um. What what was the uh, the one they started with right after they uh, finished the series? Was that season eight? 
Uh, yes. Uh, the one I'm staring at is labeled The Long Way Home. Okay. So how about we do the first, uh, let's say five issues of season eight. Okay. You know, that'll be enough where we get an idea of it, but it shouldn't be enough where we have to dig deep to get into the mythology, I would imagine. Okay? Yeah. All right. All right, then afterwards we'll do the uh, the Serenity comics. This this is going to be a different road. Mm-hmm. All right, well, thank you very much. I invite you guys to roll with us again next week. Uh, I am Jeremy. Steve. Luigi. <laughs> and V. Thank you very much. You're going to get me a plate of spaghetti, Luigi. <laughs> I, I just <laughs> find it amusing that he will not admit that he's Mexican, but he's perfectly willing to be Italian. <laughs> I can't tell if that's racist or not. Oh, it's it's highly racist. <laughs> <laughs> v, what were you going to say? I forgot. <laughs> That's an important. Oh, my God. Uh, we're going straight to hell. Yep. <laughs>